today's list of projects starts with changing the rear hatch on my Westphalia Vanagon. My father came out to help with the heavy lifting. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on video because the camera battery decided to freeze. Here's the old rusty dented hatch. And the new rust free hatch. Now I just gotta decide what size exhaust pipe I want to use to fabricate my exhaust system. You can see the two different sizes here between two and a quarter inch and two and a half inch. I opted to go with the 2.5 inch. I decided to route the exhaust off to the side rather than underneath to emulate the factory 1.6 liter turbo diesels found in other countries. Perfect. Guess what came in the mail? Oh, this is exciting. Yes. Now, how do you open this thing? Give me. Yes. It's the stuff dreams are made of. This is the fitting that I need to get my diesel Westy running again. As you recall, the banjo fitting broke on this end. It actually broke right off about an eighth of an inch away from this bit. So the two little barb bits here were gone. They were stuck in the old hose. No way to fix that other than replace it. I finally found one. Granted, it was 70 dollars. I also ordered the 1.6 liter non-turbo 1980s fitting just in case as a you know as a spare as an extra and it's got barbs on this side too but I wanted to get something that was identical to the one that I had just in case the larger end was a slightly different size on the original rabbits. So I'm going to go outside right now get this thing put on the pump bleed the fuel system and pull my van back in so I can get to work in a heated garage. Yes! Oh, it's cold. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, 12 degrees and falling. Okay, so to put this fitting back on and bleed the fuel system, all I need is a 17 millimeter wrench. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Look at that. You can see the port where it goes. Put the fuel hose back on. And yes, I will be changing the fuel hose to something a little bit more engine friendly. Just goes right on there and I've already got my little clamp on there. Next up, make sure the injector lines are loose. Usually do this with your fingers. Oh, perfect timing. Yep. My father has come to help. I'm gonna have him manually prime the pump with this little hand pump. Now this is a siphon pump used on a lot of gas tanks and stuff, so you can do it by hand. The only downside is because it's below freezing, the rubber has almost solidified. It's a good thing he's got bigger hands than me. I have the monkey grip. He has the power. That is like way hard. It's way hard? <laughs> yep, that's fine. All right, crank. Stop. I'm gonna get a little hose. Okay. Well, that yeah. should be the right size. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right, man. Victory. Thank you. Yep. Hopefully it starts. Don't be afraid of the black smoke. It's gonna look like a locomotive, but it's gonna run brilliantly. You know, I thought a straight pipe right off the turbo was going to be a lot louder. It really isn't.
Due to it being in the single digits in the garage, my heaters don't really work very well. So I'm gonna be taking my work inside the house. Gauge cluster is next on my list of things to do. The easiest way to tell the difference between an early model or a late model is on the foil. This is an early model simply because the cluster harness plug goes right here as opposed to coming in from the bottom. As you can see here, on the bottom, I have my tachometer cluster, and on the top, I have an earlier model that uses a clock. The tachometer was actually taken out of a MK2 Volkswagen Jetta. The clock in the upper cluster came with this speedometer here. This speedometer looks much better with that tachometer, whereas that speedometer looks much better with that clock. So I'm going to swap them. Changing speedometers from one cluster to another or installing one is just four screws. Unfortunately on my cluster, one is broken off. There it is, very easy to do. All it requires is a Phillips head number two screwdriver. And here's the other speedometer. Notice the difference? Apart from the left side being 85 miles an hour and the right side being 100 miles an hour, the biggest difference is the font. Now when reinstalling your speedometer, you want to be very careful with your trip odometer reset. Make sure it goes directly into the hole. Easiest way to do that is flip the cluster over and watch it go through. And yes, I know the cluster is quite dirty, but I'm going to clean it. Just put your screws back in and there you have it. Very nice. It's astonishing the filth that can build up after 35 plus years. The next day. Today's mission starts with replacing the door window seals. Now I'm not gonna replace the vent window seal because it's fine. And I'm gonna show you how to get around having to replace it even though that it has the chrome trim. To start, you're gonna wanna remove the old felt channel that starts here goes up and around and ends right up here. I like to use a seal pick tool. And there it is. Next up, the dew wipes, which are located at the base of the window. Very simple to take out. Now as the inner dew wipe is actually in okay shape, I'm gonna save it for use on a customer vehicle in the future and give it to them for free. Now if you look inside the window channel, you're going to see these clips. There's a total of four of them. Make sure that when you put the channel in, you guide the lower section into those retaining clips. For the outer dew wipe, take a look here at your new outer dew wipe compared to your old one. You're going to see that the outside has a bigger lip, so you can't use the chrome trim. This is easily remedied by cutting it out. It is kind of a shame because this trim is in okay shape, but I do see a lot of corrosion starting at the bottom. And it's just one less thing to mess with in the future when you go to service them. So you want to go up front here, go right by the felt channel, give it a little snip. And then you're going to go up at the top and do the same thing. Now to remove the chrome trim is actually quite simple. I use a panel tool like this. Put it in between the body and the trim and simply give it a little pry and it should loosen up. Pull it up, and now you're gonna cut it. Be sure that you pay close attention to your paint. Now that the dew wipes and upper felt channel have been removed, you wanna come over here to the vent window pillar and remove the channel that's located there. Now for this, it's a little tricky because it goes down pretty far, but you're just gonna pull straight up. Now, you want to make sure that you have the same height and trim off the excess. Next, we're going to remove the trim that goes around the top of the window. And there you have it, upper trim removed. And now we can start working with the big felt channel that goes around the top here. You want to take your old channel and match it up with the new one. Now we can start feeding it in. Though it's a good idea to clean the dirt out first. There you have it, new felt channel installed. Now while you can remove this felt channel pretty easily, reinstalling it is going to be a little more tricky because you have to take off your door panel. Now be very gentle removing the panel because you don't want to break anything.
There you have it. Now, as we can clearly see, my door is in exceptional shape because this has never been messed with. Unfortunately, we're gonna mess with it. While the door panel's off, it's also a really good time to sound deaden. So here's the before. And here's the after. Now to install the new window channel here, which unfortunately requires removal of your window. To remove them, you start with this one, raise it all the way up, and you've got an access hole right here. To remove the glass, simply start lowering the window, hold it, and keep winding it down. Now in my case, I got a little ahead of myself and I put the felt channel in. Go ahead and take that back out. You want to get it up and jiggle it just a little at an angle and pull straight out. And to put the felt channel in, it's pretty simple. You go up top and just knead it into place. Another good time to use that panel tool. And to do this lower section, you can either go in through the hole here or just do it from the top. Use a ruler. Now to put the glass back in. It's a good idea to clean around here, just to remove any dirt and debris, so when you put your new dew wipes in, you're not scratching the glass. Now once the glass is in place and you have the bolts finger tight, you want to make sure the window's loose. Because this is the point that you install the rest of the seals. I'm not going to tighten the two bolts located at the bottom of the door glass because I'm going to put the seals in and then tension the window so that it goes up and down smoothly. Just finished replacing all the door seals including that felt channel, the vertical felt channel, and then both of the dew wipes. And I also added sound deadening. Huge difference. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed that vlog. I know the last couple ones have been sort of a smattering of random projects, but that's sort of what it is. You get as much done as you can during the day and you just keep moving forward one step at a time. I work a few hours a day on it as I'm able and I've been making good progress. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to actually drive my van apart from once around the court. So I really gotta get to work. And if you wanna keep watching, hit that like and subscribe to come along for the ride and I'll catch you soon.